So good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Uzoma Wagba, and I am the Chief Operating Officer of the Growth Platform. In this presentation, we'll show you our work, which has become Africa's largest operation for impact and finance on micro, small, and medium enterprises. Uh, these include traders, artisans, um, and farmers. What you see here is a landscape of a typical African country, and it's not very different from what my co-presenters and co-finalists have been talking about earlier. And I'm using Nigeria as an example, which is where we are resident, with a high degree of illiteracy. Um, about 20% of the population is completely illiterate. Most of the population, more than half of the population is just barely semi-illiterate. There's lack of identity or relevant data on, on individuals, that problem is being solved, but we're still quite far behind. And as a result, you can't finance or fund what you don't know. So less than 1% of formal finance goes to people who are in enterprises at that level. And yet this makes up over half of our population. So you can see how it's not difficult for the cycle of extreme poverty that we see in countries like Nigeria to continue. But what is not lacking is a high degree of entrepreneurship. So even with a population that is unidentified largely and also largely illiterate, we have a high degree of entrepreneurship where pretty much every Nigerian is in some type of hustle, some type of micro, small and medium enterprise. And today, these enterprises, traders, artisans, farmers, make up over 50% of our GDP, even though they are largely informal. And yet, and also employ about 70% of our labor force. So think about it. Half of your GDP, 70% of your labor force, but they are receiving less than 1% of formal finance. And this has kept them in a cycle of underachievement as enterprises. So that's the problem we are here to solve, which is how do you bridge the, that, the data issue, the issue of identity, profiling, and reach the last mile to provide capital to micro, small, and medium enterprises. And rather than just talk, I think the best way to show you this is just to take you to the field. And I'll play a video that pretty much summarizes um, the work that we do and shows the, how it works, our platforms on the field. Uh, just do that again. Okay. Please confirm you can still see my screen. Can you see my screen? No, not right now. Okay. I think my name is Wagba, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Growth Platform. Over the past five years, we have built Africa's largest social intervention infrastructure, providing much needed capital in credits and grants to over 4 million micro, small, and medium enterprises. This capital can range from as low as $20 to as high as $10,000 per enterprise. We are on an ambitious journey to scale this up to 25 million enterprises over the next five years. In a country of 100 million poor people, nothing could be more stifling of our collective potential as a humanity. But poverty is primarily a problem of opportunity gaps. The poor are some of the smartest, most driven, and most entrepreneurial of our humanity. We have designed and built this operation that seeks to tackle the poverty challenge head on through economic empowerment of micro, small, and medium enterprises that employ 70% of our population. These enterprises have been left behind because the cost to reach and serve them with traditional methods of banking and microfinance is too expensive. We overcome this challenge through a process innovation, creating a network of over 22,000 human banks equipped with our proprietary mobile handheld technologies and serving these beneficiaries directly in their communities with credit, grants, and financial literacy. These beneficiary enterprises go through a diligent verification process and sometimes receive their first ever mobile wallet or bank account through us and our partners. We take the financing and literacy to them, empowering them to grow their enterprises and livelihoods. 
The team is a fairly young team comprising of professionals. The average age here is about 27 years old. It includes bankers, technologists, we have data scientists, we have media professionals, we have, as well on our team, market activations, event planners, we have people who engage our stakeholders. There are very many roles that make up the growth platform that you see today. We operate on a meritocracy. Our people are quite driven by the results. It's quite refreshing to see a fairly young team of people being able to work on a project that is of this magnitude and deliver the results that we see. Thank you very much. Uh, so what you have seen there is essentially a, a summary of how we go about the work that we do. Um, we focus on extreme process innovations and using technology to first digitize millions and millions of enterprises, that is businesses, traders, artisans, farmers. And with those records, we are able to profile them, run credit scorings on them, and also channel funds in terms of credit or grants to these enterprises, giving the information that we know of them. And we do this by bridging what we're doing, what we call digitization by proxy, which is that we use an intermediary who is an agent. And we have 22,000 of such people who interact with these enterprises on the field and are able to capture these, these uh, records. So they are impacted. Uma, sorry to yeah. interrupt you. It is a pity to interrupt you, but we reached the six minutes. So let's hear uh, reactions and questions in case they have them from our panel of judges. Sure, thank you. Thank you so much, Usama, for sharing the Grow Platform project. Yes, Professor Douglas, go ahead. Please. Thanks for that. You, you talk about the process of, of digitizing records about small businesses. Tell me exactly what you're doing there. Sure. So we get the uh, lots of information on the businesses from their revenue profile to the information on the entrepreneurs. Sometimes we provide a national identity for them. So we partner with the, the, the central bank, for example, that does the national financial identity. We capture information from the GPS locations of their store, how they trade, what they trade. And we do it in form in their ecosystems, either in their cooperatives or in their market clusters. What this does is that because there's a resident human bank in that community, and we have human banks in every single local community in the country who is using our technologies and using our applications, this human bank is able to go to those businesses as many times as we require them to, either to continue to update information on their revenue, update information on their usage of the finance, or just capture them for one of our programs that we use to, that we get out of financial partners like the World Bank. And with this information, what happens is now we are able to continue to channel credits or grants or capacity building to these businesses. And they are able to, at some point, even be weaned to the formal financial system, that is the banks that have not been able to serve these groups because of lack of this level of detail and information on who they are and how they trade and the amount of um, capital that is required of them. Thanks for that. And a follow on, because I, I like the human bank concept a lot. Um, what sort of training do you give for, for the human banks? These human banks are, uh, so the profile of our human banks are not, they're not liter illiterate at all. They are graduates who, uh, you know, they have a university degree, a lot of them, uh, more than half of them have university degrees. And they get technology training, first of all, because a lot of our proprietary platforms, either for the enumeration, for the data capture, for the credit profiling, for the provision of the national identity for where they have to give them a BVN, that is the national financial identity. They all get trained on the use of the platforms to be able to do this capture. They also work with, with what we call aggregators who are essentially um, custodian partners that manage them. And those aggregators train them as well in just basic interactions with some of these businesses. But remember that these are a bit more, these human banks are a little bit more sophisticated. They are not illiterate. So they, they, they have the, the, both the intelligent, well, I won't say intelligent, the exposure rather to technology and to sort of more modern digital skills or processes, but they are also deeply local because they live in those communities. So they serve these enterprises like just the same way you serve your grandmother or your uncle or your, your, your relative. 
So they, they have that, then we use that as a, we call them the intermediaries or the digitization by proxy between us and the largely literate but highly entrepreneurial uh, mass population of the country. And the compensation models for them? Oh, the compensation model is, is in multiple folds. So the first is their, their primary role is to completely digitize the enterprises. And so we have a compensation model for completion of that process. So capturing all the 63 data points that are required and continuous engagement of those enterprises as required by the program. The second um, um, revenue model is obviously if you are now, if one of the projects that's delivered to that enterprise is a credit program, that is after we assess the enterprise or our systems assess the enterprise and it's a credit program, then the model also allows us to deliver credit and then the agent is responsible for monitoring the performance of that credit and they would also um, benefit from that compensation model. We find that even our agent network, our human banks, some of them, we have PhDs in our human banks. And I'm just giving this as an anecdotal piece of information because if a PhD holder chooses to work for the group platform as a human bank, as opposed to say, being a researcher in a university, then it, it shows that the compensation model turns out to be pretty competitive for them and on the ad hoc projects that we run with them in some, in some cases. Thank you so much, Usoma. Thank you very much, much appreciated.